I want to go over the practice anchor for the second semester pre-calc. Um, and what I did was I copied down the chart that you were given as practice data. And what it was was the average monthly temperature in Fahrenheit degrees for Washington, D.C. in 2005. Uh, these numbers should look familiar to you. It's what we worked on in class right before the break. January 1st, 49, I'm sorry, January, the first month, 49 degrees. February, the second month, 52. And you can read all the way down to the end, dot, dot, dot. December, the 12th month, was 50, the average temperature was 51 degrees. So first we're going to find D. Uh, we're going to use the general equation. If you look a little lower, I wrote the general equation. This shouldn't be a surprise. Y equals A times the sine of BX plus C plus D. Uh, and we're, first, we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is find D, which is the center line for the sine regression. And uh, to find D, you take the average of the highest temperature, which is the average, the highest Y value. You add the lowest Y value and you divide by 2. So you get 89, which is the highest Y value. It's either July or August both had a temperature of 89. You add in 49 degrees, which was the average temperature in January. You divide them by 2, and you get a, um, a center line of 69 degrees. So D equals 69. Step 2 is you're going to find A. And what we're going to do is subtract D from the highest temperature. Since D is 69, the highest temperature was 89. 89 minus 69 is 20. And that's just like the amplitude above and below the center line. Um, once we know D and we know A, the next thing we have to do is find B. And we're going to divide 2 pi by the period. In this case, the period is, in, uh, you can think of the period as the time to repeat the cycle, is 12 months. So 2 pi divided by 12 simplifies to pi over 6. So B equals pi over 6. Now step 4, which is if you want to consider there to be a tough one, then step 4 is the tough step. And that's to calculate C. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute in values for A, B, and D that we found. And we're going to use the lowest value for Y and the corresponding value for X for the lowest Y value. And we're going to put that into the general equation for the sine function. So instead of writing y equals a times the sine of bx plus c plus d, we'll end up with 49 equals 20 times the sine of pi over 6 times 1 plus c plus 69. And eventually what we're going to do, the reason why we do this, is that we can have c isolated and we'll determine through algebra what the value of c is. So we're simply going to subtract 69 from both sides, leaving us with negative 20 equals 20 times the sine of pi over 6 plus c. We're then going to divide both sides by 20, and we'll get negative 1 equals the sine of pi over 6 plus c. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, but it's not really that bad. Because we know the side and we're trying to find the angle, we, we know that the side is negative 1, and we're trying to find the angle of pi over 6 plus c, we're going to use the inverse function. So instead, we're going to say the sine of the inverse sine of negative 1 equals pi over 6 plus c. Now, keep in mind that the, the values for the inverse sine are going to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Or really, I should say negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if I take the inverse sine of negative 1, there could be an infinite number of values for that. But because we're going to restrict those values to be, be being between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the value that we come up with for the inverse sine of negative 1 is pi, negative pi over 2. So then we're going to substitute that in for the sine, the inverse sine of negative 1. So we're going to get negative pi over 2 equals pi over 6 plus c. We're going to multiply all terms by the common denominator of 2 and 6, which is 6. So instead of getting negative pi over 2, we're going to get negative 3 pi, because all I did was take that value, negative pi over 2, and multiply it by 6. Instead of getting pi over 6, we're going to get pi, and instead of getting c, we're going to get 6c. So I will rewrite the equation negative pi over 2 equals pi over 6 plus c as negative 3 pi equals pi plus 6c. 
We're going to subtract pi from both sides, and we'll get negative 4 pi equals 6c. I'll divide both sides by 6, and I'll get negative 4 pi over 6 equals c. I'll simplify that, and I'll get the value of c that we're going to use, which is c equals negative 2 pi over 3. So when I substitute a, b, c, and d in to the general equation, it becomes y equals 20 times the sine of pi over 6x minus 2 pi over 3 plus 69. Next, I'm going to um, show you on the calculator how to do the exact same thing. All right, now I want to show you how to use a calculator to find the sine regression. Uh, and I used the same data. So what I did, and this should be familiar to all of you, uh, I clicked on Stat, and I'm going to choose Edit. I can either hit 1 or I can hit Enter. So I'll hit Enter. And what I did was I entered in the first column in, under L1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You'll see I went down to 12. I arrowed over and I entered the corresponding data for the, um, for the Y coordinate, which is the temperature for each corresponding month. Um, and so then what I did was I went to stat, I scrolled down to, I'm sorry, I, I had to move over to calc. So I had to move over to calc and I scrolled down to sine regression and It tells you what A equals, which is 19.5531864. tells you what B is, which is approximately 0 0.54. It tells you what C is, which is negative 2.298 approximately, or 2.297 uh, approximately. And D is approximately 69.094. Um, now, there's a way in the calculator that I found out from a student, actually, from Steve Anderson, to enter the data, to copy it directly into the computer, into uh, the equation, so that you don't have to copy it by hand and then type it all, all over again as an equation. If you go to VARS, that's the key. Uh, well, you can see where I'm pointing with the arrow, V-A-R-S key. And then you enter 5 for statistics and you scroll over to EQ, which stands for equation, and you hit enter, it'll do um, a, reg a regression equation. And, oh, sorry, let me hit that. And then if you do Y equals, it has all the information entered in. You set your window by doing zoom zero, And it'll show you a graph of the sine regression that fits within the window of the calculator. And you'll see that I have the scatter plot already point already plotted. The way that you do that is you go to second and then you hit the y equals key, which is stat plot. You make sure that where it says stat plot one, you hit enter and you make sure that, it, generally it defaults to off, but what you're going to do is move it over to the left so that your cursor is blinking over the word on, and then you hit enter, and then you graph it, and those points will show up. And that's what you do. And to, again, to write out that equation, you simply go to stat, calculator, and you can scroll down to sign regression, hit enter, hit enter again, and it'll tell you what A is, what B is, what C is, and what D is. And you can round those to the nearest hundredth. So instead of writing the equation y equals a times the sine of bx plus c plus d, you simply substitute in a, b, c, and d rounded to the nearest hundredth and that's the equation that you'll write down. Um, we can go over this more in class, but I just wanted to give you a heads up as to how to do both the 
sine regression without the calculator and the sine regression with the calculator.